So in the last video, we took a look at how we were able to find the derivative of the sine function. We found that it was actually going to be the cosine and that we had to use these big complicated limits um, to ultimately arrive at our answer. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look here at example number one, or actually I should say, I'm going to ask you to take a look at example number one to see if you are actually able to find the derivative of the cosine function. Now, I provided a hint here, and you might be able to see where that comes up as we kind of get started on this question together. Notice again, if you wanted to calculate the derivative of a brand new sort of function, you'd have to start by setting up your big scary limit. That is, you'd have to do the limit of the function with x plus h plugged in, minus the cosine of just x, and all over h. And the cool part here is that I think that you could actually take this um, and finish out the entire problem by almost kind of mimicking what we did back with the proof up here of the theorem for the derivative of the sine function and, of course, the work that we did to get there based on the opening motivation. So I'm actually going to ask you right now to try to pause the video to see if you can try to work out the details of this and fully figure out the derivative of the cosine function. So go ahead, hit pause, try to work through this, and when you hit unpause, you'll see me go through the solution. Okay, well hopefully you did take some time to do this, and you should have gotten to a final answer of negative sine of x. Let's see how we would do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, replace my cosine of x plus h using the identity that I have up above. So that's going to be cosine of x cosine of h um, minus sine of x sine of h and then minus cosine x that's still up there in the numerator. Two of my terms have a cosine of x involved. And so I'm going to go ahead and try to factor out that cosine of x from those two terms. If I do that, I'm going to be left with a cosine of h minus 1, and then also a minus sine x sine h. All of this over h. Now what we can do is we can separate this into two separate fractions limit h goes to 0 cosine of x times the cosine of h minus 1 all over h and then minus a limit as h goes to 0 of the sine of x times the sine of h over h. We should be able to recognize that the cosine of x and the sine of x act as constants because they have no h involved and so I can pull them outside of the limit. So then I would have a limit cosine of h minus 1 over h. Over here, I can pull the sine function out. So I'm going to have sine of x, limit as h goes to 0, sine of h over h. And now I can make use of those two limits that we uh, proved in the last video. I know that this first limit has a value of 0, and this next limit has a value of 1. And so this leaves me with 0 minus the sine of x, which gives me a grand total of minus sine of x. So the derivative of the cosine is a negative sine.